Former George W. Bush Secretary of State Colin Powell, a Republican, endorsed the re-election of Barack Obama. Conservatives and Republicans were stunned in 2008 when he broke ranks with those who supported his rise to Secretary of State and endorsed Mr. Obama's bid for the presidency. Today, after such a poor performance by the president, these same Americans are stunned once again. Listen to Colin Powell in his own words as he speaks about why he endorsed a candidate that has failed in the presidency. I think that Senator Obama brings a fresh set of eyes, fresh set of ideas to the table. I think that uh, Senator McCain, as gifted as he is, um, is essentially going to execute the Republican agenda, the orthodoxy of the Republican agenda, with a new face and with a maverick approach to it. And he'd be quite good at it. But I think we need more than that. I think we need a generational change. And I think Senator Obama has captured the feelings of the young people of America and is reaching out in a more diverse, inclusive way across our society. Mr. Powell, since President Obama took office, the generational change you were excited about has created a lack of jobs for our youth, escalating college costs, and Obamacare will create higher premiums, government takeover of student loans, less money for education, and a crushing debt that they will have to pay off, which they never will. The only way to pay it off? Higher taxes. That means less money for the next generation. How's that hope and change working for them? Could you talk to us about when your decision was made final? When did you finally set your heart on Senator Obama? I have been uh, watching, as I said in there, for a long time. And then within the past uh, couple of months, I really said, you know, you just can't keep watching. you got to kind of settle down. And frankly, it was in the period leading up to the conventions and then the decisions that came out of the conventions and then just sort of watching the responses of the two individuals on the uh, economic crisis give me an opportunity to evaluate their judgment, to evaluate their way of approaching a problem to evaluate the steadiness of their actions and it was at that point that I realized that in my mind anyway that Senator Obama has demonstrated the kind of calm, patient, intellectual, steady approach to problem solving that I think we need in this country. Mr. Powell, since President Obama took office, businesses have closed, prices have gone up and regulations are strangling our economy, per the Heritage Foundation. According to reports by regulatory agencies themselves, over $40 billion in new annual regulatory burdens has been imposed since the start of the Obama administration. Two of the largest increases in regulation were imposed by Congress just last year with the implementation of the Dodd-Frank Financial Regulation Bill. Secretary, there, there were a number of chinks in your own armor, actually, because of the lead-up to the Iraq War and the events. How much did this, did that play into your decision about this, and will it be taken perhaps by some, because of your previous high-profile positions, won't it be taken by some as a repudiation of the Iraq War? I don't know why. I, you know, the Iraq War is the Iraq War. We now see that things are a lot better in Iraq. Uh, maybe if we had put a surge in at the beginning, it would have been a lot better years ago. But it's a lot better now, and uh, we can see ahead to where U.S. forces will start to come out. And so my concern was not uh, my past or what happened in Iraq, but where we're going in the future. My sole concern was where we're we going after January 20th of 2009, not what happened in 2003. I'm well aware of the role I played. My role has been very, very uh, straightforward. I wanted to avoid a war president agreed with me. We tried to do that. We couldn't get it to the UN. And when the president uh, made the decision, uh, I supported that decision. And I've never blinked from that. I've never said I didn't support the decision to go to war. And the war looked great until the 9th of April when the statue fell. Everybody thought it was terrific. And it was terrific. We had done a, The troops had done a great job. But then we failed to understand that the war really was not over. That a new a new phase of the war was beginning and we weren't ready for it and we didn't respond to it well enough and things went very 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 south very bad and now it's starting to turn around uh, through the work of General Petraeus and the troops through the work of the Iraqi government uh, through our diplomatic efforts and I hope now that this war will be brought to an end 
at least as far as American uh, involvement is concerned, and the Iraqis are going to have to be responsible for their own security and to, for their own political future. Mr. Powell, things are better in Iraq? You didn't want any more wars and felt President Obama would keep us out of war. Have you heard about Afghanistan? How about the Middle East and their uprisings? Did you hear about Egypt and their leaders' hatred towards Americans? Syria, Turkey, let's not forget Benghazi and the murder of a U.S. ambassador under your president. Sir, One more than I do have did, to go. Uh, McCain's negativity play in your decision in the negative tone it, campaign? It troubled me. I, I, you know, we have two wars. We have economic problems. We have health problems. We have education problems. We have infrastructure problems. We have problems around the world with our, with our allies. And so those are the problems the American people wanted to hear about. Mr. Powell, you said Mr. McCain was not talking about what Americans cared about in 2008 and instead was focusing on Islamic extremism, Mr. Bill Ayers, and socialism. You thought they should be talking about the two wars, economy, education, and health. Have you heard Mr. Obama talk about the other war? The war on women, which was manufactured by his campaign team? How about the negative campaigning and using contraceptives as a talking point? Really, Mr. Powell? Not about uh, Mr. Ayers not about who is a Muslim and who's not a Muslim. Uh, those kinds of images going out in Al Jazeera are killing us around the world. And we have got to say to the world, um, doesn't make any difference who you are or what you are. If you're an American, you're an American. And this business of, for example, a congressman from uh, Minnesota who's going around saying, let's examine all congressmen to see who is pro-America or not pro-America. We have got to stop this kind of nonsense, pull ourselves together, and remember that our great strength is in our unity and in our diversity. Mr. Powell, you said Mr. McCain said President Obama hung out with terrorists and has terrorist inclinations. Have you seen the facts, Mr. Powell? Did you know that dictators across the globe are endorsing the president over Mitt Romney? President Morsi in Egypt and the president are spending time with each other, but Mr. Obama will not spend time with our friend and ally, Israel. And so that really was driving me. And to focus on people like uh, Mr. Ayers, these trivial issues, for the purpose of suggesting that somehow Mr. Obama would have some kind of terrorist inclinations, I thought that was over the top. It was beyond just good political fighting back and forth. Uh, I think it went beyond. And then the sort of throw in this little Muslim connection. You know, he's a Muslim and my gosh, he's a terrorist. And it was, it was taking root. And we can't judge our people and we can't hold our elections on that kind of basis and so yes that kind of negativity troubled me and the constant shifting of the argument I was troubled a couple of weeks ago when in the middle of the crisis the campaign said we're gonna go negative and they announced it we're gonna go negative and attack his character through Bill Ayers and now I guess uh, the message this week is we're gonna call him a socialist Mr. Obama is now a socialist Mr. Powell you said President Obama was being called a socialist. Do you know the definition of socialism? Capitalism has been under attack since President Obama took office, and he took over the automotive industry, and banks are closing left and right. Here is the definition of socialism, a transitional social state between the overthrow of capitalism and the realization of communism. Because he dares to suggest that maybe we ought to look at the, the tax structure that we have. Uh, taxes are always a redistribution of money. Most of the taxes that are redistributed go back to those who pay them. In, in roads and airports and hospitals and schools. And taxes are necessary for the common good. And there's nothing wrong with examining what our tax structure is or who should be paying more, who should be paying less. And for us to say that that makes you a socialist, I think, is, is an, unfortunate, an unfortunate characterization that isn't accurate. And um, I don't want my taxes raised. I don't want anybody else's taxes raised. But I also want to see our infrastructure fixed. I don't want to have a $12 trillion national debt. I don't want to see an annual deficit that's over $500 billion heading toward a trillion. So how do we deal with all of this? 
Mr. Powell, this one is really scary. You were concerned about Mr. McCain and that he would send us off the deep end with a higher deficit. Are you kidding? Have you heard the news? Under President Obama, our deficit is heading to over $17 trillion. Are you still a Republican? Yes. Have you conveyed your uh, decision to Sec Senator Obama? Calls are being made. Thank you. Thank you. When did you tell the campaign? Mr. Powell, what Kool-Aid are you drinking?